my uh, approach, apart from the obviously the mindset thing, which is everything, the production side of it, which is kind of connected to the mindset, um, is a uh, it's a kind of a bypassing because of the because of the you know the the drawing process for me is a response you know a visceral response a, a, an emotional response or something um that clearly is connected to my mindset that's i have to be in that place i have to have this uh, no fear kind of um no expectations approach to it which is fundamental but what it how it manifests is that the way i make the marks the way i um capture things isn't what you normally see so when you've got you know uh, you'll see people there are you know various and this is this is the norm that people will just we've got this guy here we people will just look at getting this everything in the right place you know i mean i'm sort of just skinning over it but that's what they'll do there's outlines to be drawn the outlines of the eye and the outlines of the nose and um there are mechanics to actually find the positions of it. So you've got people doing this and then they're doing this, you know, um, and then doing that and then, you know, dividing the thing up. We've got that, we've got all that kind of thing going on. Perfectly legitimate. But for me, it's not, I can't, I can't do that. I can't do this construction thing um, because of the way that I, I respond. So, so there are two things that happen. I, I, basically look for anchors on the um, on the face um which become literally the anchors for everything else then i and then it's shapes and it's tones but this is a simultaneous process so it's not a case of oh well you know when when i teach the dots we talk about one dot two dot three dots you know top of his ear one eye and the other. we're talking about three dots but that's just to get your eye in if you like it's to get your 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 visual comparisons um, uh, calibrated uh, we should always be looking for three dots to a line whether they're whether they're the, the top of his is um the forehead where it meets the hat then to his eyebrow then to the tip of his nose it's you're always going to be doing that constantly as you're drawing in this particular way that I draw, you're constantly going to be doing that. You can't be stopping and starting and saying, oh, I'm going to look for the alignment. You will be looking for alignments of things, you know, where the bottom of the, 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 the where the eyebrow there meets the top of the, the eye on that side. You'll be, you'll be doing that. The same with where the, where the, the hat meets the forehead uh, or where the nose uh, aligns with the corner of his moustache or with the chin, so how far in that uh, aligns to the, that nostril. You know, you were doing all that. But it's all one motion. This is the thing. It can't be independent things because because everything relates to everything. It's a whole face. So from from my point of view, and I, and I deliberately use unwieldy mediums. You know, sort of it, it's homemade charcoal on on cartridges. There's nothing fancy about it, but it's not. It hasn't got a point on it. it hasn't got that one has. I mean, just to add a little bit of. A little bit of precision to it, but generally speaking, I'll use something big, fat, and ugly, because that that'll stop me from trying to draw the thing. So, because I want, I want to get this, um, I want to get this thing down quickly. I am, I am looking for. What I'll do is, I'll do this, uh, and then I'll stop. Right. So there is where I can see the top of his ear. Right. So then I'll carry on, and then I'm looking for his eye. So there is where I see his eye. Then I carry on, and I'm looking then for where that eye is. So all of a sudden, that's what's happening. So so as I'm going through this process, doing exactly this, feeling my way around, I'm I'm actually making these comparisons, gradually looking at where things align, and it and it it's not a, a it's a it's a one motion thing, but you know it's not a um, it's not a, a um, stop start sort of thing it is the whole of the face uh, and what happens with this is that you get you get to a point where everything can be in the wrong place and that's that's as good as where you want to be because once that happens everything then starts to 
um, have meaning. Because once you know something is in the wrong place, it means you know where it should be. And that's the thing. Knowing where something it should be starts from knowing where it isn't. Um, and that's such a, a, and unless you commit to this, unless you go and, and, and look for these, um, these alignments as you're uh, feeling your way around the, the face, exploring the face, unless you commit to that, you're never going to find the wrong marks. Um, you might find the right marks first time. That's fine. That's, that's great. But more often than not, you'll find that the wrong marks uh, and that will, that's, that's even better. It's even better because there are side effects to the wrong marks. Side effects being that you'll get a, a very much, a much more um, uh, lively uh, approach to it. You'll feel, you'll feel a, a slight vibration about the way that, I know, I know that sounds a bit crazy, but, but the way that things um, don't work um, tends to create a, particularly if you start removing things it tends to create a um, uh, a, a leftover you know a, a, um, a mark of where it should have been or where it was um, and that that in a way adds it to this vibration so and that in turn gives the thing this un, um, unplanned uh, serendipitous element to it a bit that you, you couldn't really you couldn't really replicate the the um, the feeling that, that having this these marks that were there once and then be, being removed, you don't get, you can't do that deliberately. So consequently, you get this, um, as I say, serendipitous effect that that brings something to the to the drawing, not just the portrait, it can be drawings as well, um, but it brings something to the drawing that you wouldn't, you couldn't contrive. So consequently, as I say, it's. Um, it's a, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. I think it's a good thing from the point of view of of um, the flow because of the uh, because of the the um, the the lack of of deliberation over it. You get a you get a, a natural flow, uh, whether it's tones or whether it's you know position of things or whatever. You get a natural flow from it. But one of the things is that. As I'm doing this, this is a this is probably the the, the, the biggest thing. Um, and as I'm as I'm, I'm all I'm doing, I'm not really. I switched to the other piece because it's a bit softer. Because um, uh, one of the things about charcoal is that you, you kind of want it to not drag. Not it needs to flow. So if you use shop board or whatever, you'll naturally get a flow. Some, but with the natural stuff. Um, you get its its uh, density changes, so you get it will it will suddenly get hard and spiky. So um, with the uh, and you can see if I was working faster now or working at full tilt, it would be a lot further down the road, and I'd probably be close to finishing it. But the 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 thing about outlines and then coloring in, you know, adding the tone to it, um, it's it's a <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a cold. Um, is um, it's a much slower process. A lot of people like that kind of accuracy, that um, deliberation thing. Um, but it, it, for me, it has it lacks life. So I need I need it. I need the marks to be lively. Uh, that's the way that for me that life enters the portrait. Um, but what happens as I'm as I'm looking i'm looking sort of i'm looking at shapes i'm looking at the, i'm looking at that distance in there as I, I don't i don't draw those those things i actually just put tone into it i'm not i'm not really concerned about whether or not that value is the right value i'm more concerned about whether or not it's the right shape um i can fix the values um uh, but it, what happens is that it, it it appears to be a much more rapid way of drawing because you literally at the stage where most people will be starting to colour it in, you're actually doing it and, and putting the tones onto it and defining things with tones. The tones are not right. You've got to sort the balance of the tones out. But it's a much, it's a much uh, more uh, uh, efficient way of uh, managing the tones because you're not, you're not sort of locked into um, the considering the grad graduation is forward, for instance, this is not, we're not talking anatomy, we're not talking geometry. We're talking about 
two-dimensional shapes. That's all we're talking about. It's the, the worst thing you can do is think of it as a three-dimensional shape. A lot of people teach that, and it's, it's, a, bad, it's a bad thing because um, most people can't think in 3D. They can't think what in three dimensions what makes that, but they don't need to because it's two-dimensional. And if your observations are um, tuned, which is what I was saying about um, the three dots thing, if you can tune your, your observational skills to see with accuracy, then that's all you that's all you need. You don't need to be able to understand what spheres or what ellipses define this face. You just need to be able to see how the tones relate to each other, how the shapes relate to each other. And by using shapes and tone to draw, as opposed to trying to draw with outlines and then colour it in, you you accelerating the process, which is not not the point. But the point is that as because you're accelerating it, because all of the things are going on all at once, you can see whether or not how it's developing, whether or not it's right or wrong or wrong. You can see all those things. And that's that's the most important bit, that you can see everything in relation to everything. You can see whether or not the hat is um, the right size. You can see all that sort of stuff because it's happening right now. It's not a case of, oh, I'll, wait to, I'll get to that bit when I've done the eyes. You know, that, that sort of bit-by-bit bit kind of approach. It's not like that. Um, and, and that, again, is it's partly because um, people fear uh, doing this. I, I can imagine that that would be a, a big uh, inhibitor because just scribbling with charcoal, it can, be, it can be quite daunting. I mean, drawing a portrait is daunting for a lot of people. Um, but by... Um, uh, having the, the right mindset and how, having the, you know, the, uh, uh, I suppose unleashing your um, your uh, self to doing this rather than it being a, you know, a, a, a limiting thing. Because that's, that's, I've just seen somebody talking about self-limiting beliefs now and, that, and that's kind of, um, you see, self-limiting beliefs, it's fine, but um, it's, a de it's, a, it's a mindset thing. Uh, self-limiting beliefs are just simply a symptom of having the wrong mindset so so you know if if people start talking about you know having uh, self-limiting beliefs then if they don't address the real issue the mindset issue then they're not going to fix they're not going to be able to fix your uh, um the problem with self-limiting beliefs um because primarily everything, whether it's whether it's fear of failure or whether it's artist block or whatever, all stem from expectations. Um, and and as I say, I often say to students, zero expectations. It is what it is. What you get is what you get. Don't think of of um, of oh, I've got to be this good or I've got to I've got to do it in this way or you know anything like that. Don't fear the, the process. Don't fear the marks that you make. There's all all that sort of thing. But um, this is why this process works, this way of working works. It's because uh, having zero expectations, you feel as, your mark making is fearless. Um, and it has to be, it has to be fearless. It has to be completely, whatever is gonna happen is happen, happening. The, the practical side of it is you learn to actually uh, see relationships on the fly, if you like, as you're you're scribbling your way around, you're seeing, you're looking for those relationships. You're looking for the top of his eye and the corner, sorry, top of his corner of his eye. You're looking for those things as you're doing them, but it has to be simultaneous. It can't be bit by bit. It can't be trying to find the alignments and then colour it in. It doesn't work. It's got to be. You've got to be doing it real time. It's got to be doing done uh, as a as a one motion thing. Um, because what happens is, this is a strange thing, I, it's a thing that I read in Robert and Ryan's book the other day, uh, about if if I change, say, the shape of that hat there, just change the top bit of that brim, it affects everything else. So that if I look at that in relation to everything else on there, I see how that then impacts on the uh, on the hair that's been, uh, that's coming out of the back there as well. So I, I everything relates to everything. Unless you're doing drawing the whole face simultaneously you're not going to you're going to be struggling to, you're going to have to get back to the 
you know, the drawing, the outline, the, the planning, the all that kind of thing. Well, there is there is no planning to this. It's just completely responsive. And that's what it's all about. You have to be making art, full stop, is a responsive um, process. You, you will respond to whatever is before you. Um, and that's and that's and however you respond is is how you respond. That's the that's the beauty of it because it's your response and not somebody else's. So if you're locked into somebody else's methods, then chances are we've already gone through the process of figuring it out. Chances are you're going to end up doing it like them. And if you, if it's doing it like them is the goal, then you're going to suffer with comparisons. You're going to suffer with you know artist block and, and fear of failure and, and um, self limiting beliefs because half the time these people that are really good at doing the outlines and coloring it in have spent thousands of hours learning how to do it. So you you're just you know you've no chance no chance of doing that. So you've got to as Robert N. Rice says you've got to be master of what you can do now. So we're always masters of our current status, of our current skill levels. Masters are something that somebody else defines. They're not. You're always a master of what you currently can do. You should be. Um, otherwise, you're always anticipating this mastery to arrive at some point because of a consequence, i.e., that you've spent a thousand hours doing something. So this this point of this, what I'm trying to make is that, as you can see now. As I started to tighten everything up, get the the uh, you know the right sizes nailed down, because I know I can, I've got that the back of his hat there, in the, and I know that they say the distance from the back of his hat to there is too short. So it, as that comes down, then it comes to there. So I can fix all these because I've already got these nailed down. They're not, it's not you know hard and fast, but it will suddenly start to get to a point where I can then worry about the densities. You can see how using the tones has identified all the shapes, all the major shapes on it. Uh, and applying tone rather than outlining things gives me a better comparison because I can't, you know, you can't really see if it's just outlines. Having actual uh, tone on there, it makes it easy to see the shapes you're trying to identify. So once I've got to a point where that's the case, I can then worry about the balance. So the balance is the density of that, part of his beard for instance in relation to the the, the chin uh, sorry the neck so the balance is all the tones in there that i've got to find the balance between so and they're all very they're all going to be very um uh, subtle the changes uh, the, the main thing is getting all the things in the right place so i've got i've got distance from there to the tip of his nose right and i've got that I've got that right. So that from there to there to, to the lip, there's another one there. So so it goes one, two, three, and that's right. So those are the those are the things I've been able to find by just using scribbling. After that, then you set about finishing and balancing. And then you get to a point where you're when you start to balance it, you start you start doing that with it. So from that, as you can see, after 20 minutes, we say that. You can simply get to that, and what what simple? Well, I'm saying simply, you can get to that in about another hour. That's I think it was about an hour and four minutes in the lesson, but that you can see has lots of remnants of the of the that. You can see the beard there. There are bits of the beard. Let me get it in shot. There are bits of the beard there that are, as you can see, some of those kind of initial scribblings. Which is one of the nice things about this approach is that the serendipity thing is that you make marks as you journey through the face you make marks that will indicate or or, or uh, describe a particular element on the face without the need for it to be some kind of major production because one of the things you'll get if you if you've got outlines and coming in one of the things you'll get bogged down by is how do you render something but really all you're concerned with is how you describe that thing it doesn't matter about whether the, the marks go this way, that way, whether they're, they're feathered or whether it's a thick piece of charcoal or a thin piece of charcoal. If it describes what you're trying to capture, that's all that matters. So so this approach is much more, um, it's, much, it's a much better way, particularly if you're a beginner, it's a much better way to go about doing this because the other way requires things like draftsmanship, as people use that phrase, 
uh, it requires a certain technical understanding. It requires dexterity and practice and all of those things. This doesn't. This, this, this requires good observation. Good, good observation is the key to all making all great art. It's all about observation. And this way focuses on that. It doesn't focus on how well you can make these perfect outlines. It's not about draftsmanship. It's about this responsive, you know, it, drawing for me is capturing what you see driven by what you feel. That's what, for me, drawing's about. And, and having that approach turns everything on its head. From, from as I say, from a beginner's point of view, it just opens up so much potential. Um, that if you've got the right mindset, you've got you, well, you've got to have the right mindset because you can't be locked into an outcome. You know, if you expect a particular outcome from something, and I know it's a portrait, and you always have a you know, it must look like somebody kind of scenario. It will look like somebody. Uh, trust me, if you connect with a subject. It cannot help but look like the person you're drawing. This is the problem. There's a there's a myth that the likeness is in the detail. There's a myth that it takes a long time to find the likeness. It doesn't, because if you if you think about when you meet somebody, it takes you seconds to to um, understand their mood, for instance, and do other things as well. I think but most of us judge people pretty quick anyway for all kinds of things. But let's say it takes you seconds. So if you can, if you can harness that skill, which we all of all of us have got, if you can harness that skill to drive the way that you draw, then you will capture not just the likeness; you will capture the life force. So your your portraits will not just look like somebody, but they'll feel like somebody. That's what that's the, the, the only reason you make portraits as opposed to take a photograph is because it has to feel like them. That's the thing. It's all. A, it's a very much a, an emotional thing. So you've got to. It's emotional observation is what you're you're talking about, not just not just visual observation. So consequently, having an approach that fits within that responsive approach, responsive uh, method, it, it, you you can do that. If you hadn't got an approach that was responsive, it was one that required mechanical execution. You're going to get lost in the mechanics. It's going to become about the technique, and it's going to become about, oh, I can't draw noses, so I'm going to have to learn how the anatomy of a nose. It's going to be that. And your journey from wanting to make portraits and wanting to be an artist is going to suddenly become one of knowledge, and you're going to spend a long time learning about the bone structure of a nose and all the rest of the stuff that you've got to learn. So really, this this bypasses all that need because you don't – the thing is that um, people talk, talk about getting things in the right place because and, and using techniques to do that and methods and what have you. But you get things in the right place once you've developed and, and nurtured your um, uh, observational skills. So your observational comparison skills, which which is kind of like sight size in the academic world. Um, once you've you've got to a point, and we do that in the in the dots in the dot uh, method. Um, but once you've got to a point where you can you can see positions and accurately see the distance between things, whether it's comparisons with other things or whether it's just simply three dots and seeing the distance between dots as, as we do. Um, <coughs> once you got to that level, everything else will feed off that skill because the the relationships between tones is observation. Um, the 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 nature of light on something or the way it's illuminated is observation. It's all observation. The way you make marks, the, the thing about this, particularly this approach, is that you have to be you have to be present to what you, what's happening because you won't see, um, uh, you may not see the um, the accuracy of your marks if you're considering a particular outcome, for instance. So you have to be present to the, you know, what's happening. Um, it's not just a case of, oh, I'll get there in a minute. I'm working towards making that happen. As you make these marks, what's happening? Is it, does it look like it's, it's, it's that particular part of the face? Am I seeing that thing there? It, it, it's, a, it's being present really with the, with the portrait. But the thing about that and why that's important is that if you're not present when you make a portrait, and this is Robert Henry talking about the first moment that you make, you know, you, um, you encounter a face, 
is, is that that's the moment that you capture. Anything after that is just labor. So, so if you haven't got, if you're not present when it, when it's happening and you haven't caught that first moment, then you're never going to catch it because you're going to, you're going to end up where, um, you just, it just turns into a, a labor. It just becomes a, um, what is it he calls it a data gathering exercise but that that's kind of what what the problem is and a lot of people aren't present when they're doing it because they're focused on the outcome and the outcome is probably driven by technique so it has to be this good it has to be this detailed so so that's their priority that's their you know their um their aim and their objective and that to a lot of people that's what making art is and that's what making portraits are so so and consequently it feeds into a different narrative so people are people are coming to this if you're new to this people are coming to this and that's the narrative they see and they see the con you know the the um uh the, the approach that these these people take to get to that narrative and it's all loaded into technique and, and, and practice and you know years and years and, and whatever um and it's all loaded into that and that becomes the the path that they have to take or feel they have to take. And consequently, that's loaded with pitfalls, i.e., you know, I'm not good enough and, um, and fear of doing it and all that sort of thing, which is, you know, the consequence of this wrong approach. So, so again, that's back to mindset. But the um, the idea that you can, you can uh, capture it quickly using something like this, which was, you know, 20 minutes and if I'd been, as I say, full tilt, we'd have done by now. But, the idea you can capture that essence quickly, everything after that is just as far as you want to go. Because one of the things that this does and this approach does is that if the if the purpose of a portrait is to capture the essence of a face, yeah, no more than a likeness, it has to feel like them. As soon as you've caught that essence, you stop. You don't carry on doing it. You don't need to carry on because the objective has been, has been fulfilled which is, I just wanted to capture the twinkle in his eye or whatever it might be that moved you to capture his face. So there's a whole raft of other benefits from having this approach to having one that's driven by a technical outcome because this approach is just simply, um, it's done when it's done. It's done when it feels right. But you can't have that approach if you've got the wrong mindset. If your mindset says technical ability and it says, uh, detail and it says uh, as good as somebody else and all the rest of it then you, you just you don't know when to stop this is the problem with technical and, and, and detail approaches is that when do you stop when is when is enough detail enough detail that's that's the thing and that's why people have problems to stop it because the, their outcomes are based on this skill level um, it's the reason why people stop and it's the reason why people don't start you know so skill is a is a is a great thing and these skills you will develop skills the first skill you've got to develop is observation but but you can already do that we just people forget how to look properly um but once you've you've um got that nailed down all the things the you know the way you make marks the way you smudge things and the way that you know position on the paper everything all of that is your journey so your skills Again, read Robert Enright's Art Spirit. All of this is in there. But, but he talks about, you know, uh, accumulation of skills in order to use them, you know, in an application. You should always be fresh to something. It should always be a new experience. It's whatever skills you've developed, they're useless because this is a different face. Every time it's a different face. It's not about accumulating skills, practicing how to draw nose and all. So it's not that. You just, you just, you, you develop a kind of a, um, a dexterity for doing this, but the actual process may require different skills, and th and you'll apply them at, at the moment that you're, you're you need them. That's that's the thing. Um, so and that's and that's all driven by ultimately by your goal to capture the essence of somebody. So your skills will develop based on that. Um, and that's it. It's not. Uh, it's not. This is this is the thing I keep trying to tell people. This is not hard to do. Um, the dexterity thing, you know, the, the being able to make marks and, you know, I'm working at arm's length now. So I always talk about, you know, you must, you must work at arm's length. You must distance yourself from where you're working. Never lean on it and never get too close because you're going to have all, if you, this is just practical stuff. If you're working like that, you're always going to have trouble with proportions. Um, if you work literally, 
you know, side by side, or if it's a, if it's a live model side by side, if you work like that, you're always going to make in, you're always making vertical comparisons. Um, if you're working flat or even at an angle, you're you're going from vertical to that angle or to the flat, and your brain has to do all that when you're drawing. So not only have you got problems with oh I'm getting things in the right place, or even the tone, for instance, or the shapes or whatever. You've also got to convert from the vertical to the horizontal. That's a that's a nightmare. If you're going to make, if you're new to this, that is a there's there's ten years of practice right there. But if you do it this way, this is a, the glancing method, or people talk about squinting and, and and blurring, but that's not that's to do with tones and color. But just glancing backwards and forwards, and you're thinking about an animator. An animator does exactly that, glancing backwards and forwards. Um, but there are two things that happen with that is that you only see in a glance you only see certain amounts of detail so so that and that's all you're going to draw if you position things quite close you can stare at the at the reference and see the thing in your peripheral vision without actually doing looking at what you're drawing which is a great way to to see if things are right or wrong glancing backwards and forwards just like an animator you can see whether things are in the right place instantly see that so those are just practical things there's and that's not a skill they can you can just do that right now no no one needs to practice doing that um you may need to practice working at arm's length and, and and holding your arm vertically for you know an hour is it can be tiring but that's that's it's nothing i mean that's just one of those things but uh, that's it really it's all about mindset obviously as i said but primarily it's about shapes and tone and when it gets to this stage as i said uh, we now at a point where things are just about in the right place. All I've got to worry about now is just balancing the tone so that it starts to have a bit more, like on the one I just showed you, it will have more shape to it and it'll have a little bit more finesse. But this is such a, a rapid way of working that um, it, it's such a rewarding thing. You know, because you, you can get to a point where, you can see now, you can get to a point where the face is there. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't need. A, and I, the thing about that is that when we when we're drawing things, um, uh, the points at which you actually see things happening, the resemblance starts to appear, or you know, you capture something, or whatever it might be. Those points of, of um, those happenings, if you like, they they kind of spur you on. Because you, so you need those. You need those as positive markers to say, oh, just you know, I can see the face now starts to shape, come to shape, and that and that because it happens quickly as opposed to some laborious outline that's then going you know, to take you two or three weeks to get the lines exactly where they need to be and then colour it in. There's, there's no joy in that, and that's the that's the fundamental thing that you want. It wants to be a, a joyful and and uh, and rewarding experience. But there's no joy in the drudgery of and the drudgery <laughs> even, um, of um, of working your way from through some line drawing, which is ultimately going to be coloured in or painted over or whatever. There's no joy in that. You want to get to a point where you see results, and you can do that with this method, and you'll be seeing results within an hour at the tops. Um, but you've got to, you've got to. You've got to embrace this. This is not this is not something for the, the faint-hearted. But then again, art shouldn't be. It shouldn't be something that you do precariously produce. It has to. It has to have fire in it. If it hasn't got that, that element of the moment, this visceral thing, then what is it? It's just a. It's just a replica of somebody's face, and that and or landscape or whatever. It can't have that, can it? Um, but if you're if you're wanting to make things that are full of life if you're wanting to capture things in this way this is probably the easiest way to do it so as i said it's it's i wanted to just talk about my particular approach this this uh tone a shape and tone approach is it's it's built on the scribbling and the you know the uh, the dots using the dots it's built on that approach but this is the whole thing all at once. I talk about it in the course where we do dots, then we do shapes, and then we do tones. Um, but I do it simultaneously. That's why, you know, it looks like I'm just scribbling all over the place. But like when I stopped at the top of his ear, for instance, and when I uh, stopped on his eye, you can see that that's what I was doing. 
I was actually doing that, but nobody sees me doing it. It just looks like I'm, I'm scribbling all over the face. But that, that that's it. It's not, as I say, it's not it's not hard to do. Uh, you just got to you got to go for it. This is the thing, the de dexterity thing. One of the reasons why working at arm's length is good as well, because your arm flows. It's difficult to flow when it's like from your wrist. You can't flow in the same way. Um, but that's, that's again, one of those practical things that takes no practice other than persistence in, to say, in terms of the uh, the way your arm might ache. But it takes no practice to sort out your working position. Um, just, it's just getting used to it. A lot of people tend to work on, on the flat or, or, or a, a, a slight angle. But, um, yeah, as I said, it's... Um, it's uh, it's, it's an easy way to do and make portraits and uh, quickly um but it's as i said it, it's you gotta you gotta you gotta go for it you gotta you gotta give into it and uh, and understand the uh, uh, the main thing one of the things as well i would say is that understanding the the priorities of, of what you're drawing understanding what's important what is it this is economy efficiency and um, and uh, is it accuracy um you understanding which bits make the eye the eye is it all of the eye or is it just that dark bit there and the, the, the white of his eye? Is it just that that tells me that that's an eye? Because if it is, that's all I'm going to draw. I'm not going to draw anything else. Why would I draw anything else? I've already communicated that that's an eye. I don't need to describe every part of the eye. I just need to tell you that there's an eye there. That, that understanding that there, that there is a priority, you've got to see what the you know, what elements are needed to describe a particular element on the face. Now, this is not, I'm not talking about noses, eyes or ears. I'd never do, um, because that's a, that's a sure way to sort of scupper any kind of response, because all that happens is your brain gets involved and tells you what an, an eye and an ear should look like, and consequently that's what you end up drawing. You've got to just draw what you see. You can't, it doesn't work if, it, if you... If you think you're going to draw something you know, then which is which is the problem if you use anatomy or methods or anything like that, that all that knowledge is just going to get in the way of your spontaneous creative um, response. You can't you can't have knowledge with this. Um, think of it as a child looking at it because a child would simply be curious and they would simply be exploring the face or exploring whatever is in front of them. That's what you need to be doing. So that's as I say is a um, uh, um, probably a, 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 one of the biggest things in terms of uh, this this method, the idea that that there are things that are, have more priority, things that make things work, and things that are unnecessary. Because you can there are you can get embedded within the unnecessary as well. So you get locked into a an eyebrow or an eyelash when really it's unnecessary because it's not the eyebrow in that, or in this case. There's, there is that sort of dark mark there, almost like a shadow there. But it's mainly that dark mark there and that bit of white there, and that's about it. There's not much there's not much else that describes that eye. You can get you can go on and <clears throat> make it more detailed later, but at this instance, I'm already describing exactly what you need to see. So that's it. As I said, it's mainly the shape and the tone thing that I was trying to sort of get across. But but the other factors are you've got to have the right mindset. And you've got to uh, understand about, you know, what elements, particularly when you're working like this, what elements make that thing work? What the, What's the most important thing? You've got to understand that um, and make that decision. So, but after that, it's just, you know, it's just doing it. Anyway, so... Uh, that's it. I just want. I've got. Uh, I've got. I'm full of cold. So I, I didn't want to. I didn't know whether I'd do it. I would be doing this, but but I just wanted to get over this. Um, the point of uh, the the shape and the tone and the you know the weight works and the speed and everything else, um, and um, just because people are asking that. So that's, I just wanted to say, like you know, it's not a big deal. It's this is really not a big deal. You can get bogged down with it if you want. If you choose that it, oh, it's going to be about detail and it's going to be hyper realistic and all that, fine. That's that's fine. But bear in mind that it takes some great skill to be hyper realistic. And um, um, the, at the end of the day, you've got to think about how that fits with everything else, because hyper realism is is a is a journey. 
you know, because you can never be too hyper realistic. You can never be too detailed. Um, and if you're going to choose that journey, then be aware of that, that you know, that fact and the effort and the work and the, these guys that do it, I've, I've spent years doing it. Um, and, um, but is that really what it needs to be? Is it, does it need, ask yourself, you've got to say, well, if that's my route, that's what I want to do, then that's fine. But know that it's going to be a journey. That's all. Um, whereas it, it might be just because I want to just capture faces. I just want to capture, you know, the essence of somebody. That's a different journey. That's not hyperrealism. But as I said, that's probably um, a, just a, a, a de decision you're going to have to make. Not a, uh, it's not, again, not one of those things, not the practicing element of that. You know, the decision to make hyperrealism um, is not a practice thing. It's just a decision to do it. But I would say, <clears throat> if you're interested in making portraits, never done it before, look at portraits that, that over the centuries that people have made. Don't assume that what you know to be a portrait is a portrait, is the only way to make a portrait. Because there are so many ways to make a portrait. Um, great ways that, that aren't hyper realistic or even realistic that you know you've got to have a better um uh, uh palette of of what makes a great portrait it's, it's like a tasting part you know if you've never tasted certain spices how would you know whether or not they're right or wrong so it's it's that kind of um open-mindedness that you've got to have if you're going to make great portraits because one of the things you've got to do is let it be your portrait and if, you, if you're locked into an outcome that is defined by somebody else, is that your portrait or is that their portrait? Is that, is that their way of doing it? Because what will happen is that you'll draw it and it won't look like theirs, so therefore it's not good enough. This is what you'll tell yourself. That's not good. That's not a good thing. So, so look at many, 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 many portraits and look at them all the time. Be careful when you do look at them because it's not about the, the artist's ability. It's about the fact that this, whatever they created is their creation and it's unique to them. Many of them do it exactly the same as other people. So, so you're going to get a lot of lookalikes. But let's say there is a general kind of uh, meme of a particular style uh, of portraiture. Um, that's what you're looking at. And that is the consequence of someone's personal response to a face, to a, another human being. That's what it is. It's not a measurement of their technique or a measurement of their ability or the, you know, the time they've been doing it or the knowledge. Or It's not any of those things. It's just that's how you've got, to, you've got to be objective about it. If you look at it and you're inspired, then that's not a good thing. You don't want to be inspired by people because that means that you'll end up painting like those people. You want to be you want to be appreciative of what their work and you want to be uh, acknowledged their 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 skill and their their um, ability to capture um, a face but that's it stops there it doesn't influence other than the fact that you suddenly realize that your voice is as is as valid as their voice it doesn't you know just because you're going to end up with something completely different doesn't mean to say it's better or worse than what they do and that's the problem if you, if you've got that kind of oh it's not good enough for it because it doesn't look like theirs then you're never going to be able to see when you when you find your uniqueness because that's what you're going to do you have to find your your unique voice to doing this but all i'm concerned with is what i'm teaching is this is an easier way to do it you can then take it on and make it more detailed and push things around and all the rest of it <clears throat> but if there are techniques like this that will speed up the, uh, the process uh, and get rid of all the you know the the obstacles then you should use them you should you shouldn't um, and not be locked into you know the idea that it's so sort of a drawing you know that's the thing the word drawing is a problem a lot of the time because people think of lines when they draw when really i just think of big shapes and tone so drawing to me is that it's shapes and tone drawing isn't outlines around things that's a different thing that's illustration for me, I know that a lot of people will disagree, but but for me, it, it's illustration when it's all about outlines and, and coloring in. But that, that's it. I, I, I'm not going to ramble anymore, but I'll, I'm going to finish this off and tweak a few things, source out the the uh, uh, the sideburns that just need to be uh, brought in a little bit. But the main thing with it is the tonal balance. So when when it gets to this stage and I'm getting things roughly in the right place, it then needs to, the balance of the tones needs to be rectified to do that. 
So as you can see, this is getting that way, but I need to balance the tones better. So you get the forms. There's and under, underneath all this, you can see those lines like that are all underneath there, but it ends up where it becomes balanced and everything and everything it looks like this form that remember i i'm not considering three dimensions all i'm considering is relationships of tones it happens to look three-dimensional it's just an illusion same as the detail it's an illusion but but it starts with that so anyway i'm gonna leave it at that and then hopefully hopefully i managed to explain enough so you can you can understand what i'm trying to say but essentially, um, it's not what you think it is. <laughs> That's what it is. And I've done 2,300 of these now. So um, it's like, and the, the thing about it is just a quick one, because it's so fulfilling, it happens so quickly and it's such a rewarding thing. You want to do it more. And if you want to do it more, then you get better. It's as simple as that. It's not a practice thing. It's just that if you enjoy doing something, it's difficult not to keep doing it. You know, it's like, a, and for me now, it's an addiction. So that's that's another side effect of having a rapid a rapid approach to this, that you enjoy it more. And if you enjoy it more, you keep doing it. And if you keep doing it, you get better. It's, it's a, a natural consequence. Anyway, so I love you, Olivia. And hopefully I've been able to get across exactly what it is that I'm about.